Hey guys, welcome to the next uh, Ross Development Studio. Uh, sorry, Ross Developers Live Show number five. Number five. Yes, uh, I was doing some very important stuff here. Sorry for that interruption, but now it's time that we start uh, doing some questions that you people have sent us through the email, through the web page that we have related to the questions for the Ross Live Show. Then uh, here, what do we have here? We have a question that is asked by Daniel Jeswin from India in our questions page. And he says, uh, how can I simulate a drone in ROS from a scratch? I refer to the making of the URDF file. OK, OK, very good question. OK, yes. So uh, here, in order to simulate the URDF drone, you have uh, two options, I would say. You have many, but we can divide it into two options. First option. First option will be to simulate the physics of interactions of the wheels, you know, or the fan of the fan that the drone has, and then simulate how these wheels by spinning they make the physics to make the robot lift. Okay, so for that, Gazebo is already prepared for that. If you can use a plugin that is called the Lift Drag plugin, and uh, let me show you a couple of videos that use this, that teaches you how to do this, how to use this lift drag plugin in order to propel a robot. In this case, it's for an underwater robot, but it's the same principle. It just depends on how you configure it. So let me just share my screen with you, and then you will be able to see this videos. I will put the, uh, the links to the videos into into the notes of this video of this uh, webinar live show. So don't worry, you will get it. And here is the first video. And again, in this video, we show how to use this based on another question that was. Um, express at the gazebo answers we express a question we answer a question about how to propel uh let me see if i can get to the interesting part that is where the robot moves yes so let me see yeah okay so it doesn't show so uh, let me see here that point okay so uh, in this case uh, don't worry let me show you the second video i don't know where is this part yeah here it is so yeah and sorry i think that i mistaken the the video that I wanted to show you, it's a video that is, uh, so it's, it's not that link, okay? So it's another one that shows the hydrodynamics of a simple robot. Lift the drag plugin, gazebo. Let me show you. Yeah, that's it, exactly. Sorry for that mistake. So that is the one. So I'm going to correct the links on the notes. And here it is. Yes, here it is. So this is a very simple robot that contains a, 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 a mo mobile joint. Uh, that's the one that is going to be to use to propel by using making use of the uh, lift drag plugin or gazebo. And let me show you how it looks finally. Yeah, here it is. So it's while when this joint is moving, then the robot goes in up or goes down. So basically, this is the effect that you would like to achieve with the simulation of the complete physics of the fans of the of the drone. So you have to apply that. Okay, I haven't seen any. I haven't seen any simulation that actually makes a drone 
work, as I, I mentioned here, by simulating the fans and making use of this plugin. So I haven't seen it. So, uh, but I, it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. For example, let me show you another video of an underwater robot that we created some time ago and which the code is not available already. But that's a very simple underwater robot that contains some, let me get the, show you here, there are some propellers, like the ones, like the fans of an, a drone. And then uh, we are using this to control the robot in the underwater situation. So in this case, they, they had no control at all, just the spinning as fast as possible. And you can see how the robot is after some movement, strange movement, then it starts to get height, get height, and, uh, but the control is very bad because we didn't reach to implement the control. But the principle is that. So you should be able to use that plugin in order to create a drone that uses the fan for to propel the robot up. OK, great. So uh, this is not the thing that I wanted to show you as the solution for your question. So what I would propose is that you use something that is an emulation of the physics. So that's what the usual drone simulations that you have seen in Gazebo they are using. So by emulation, it means that because the robot, the, the program, the simulation has access to all the parts of the robot, you can kind of control the position and the location and the movement of the robot not based on the physics, but based on your own equations that you know about how to move the robot and how to emulate that movement of the drone. This is basically what is implemented in the simulation that we are going to check today and that we are going to see how it works and how you can apply this to your own drone. So let's go for that and let's uh, let me for that go to the ROS Development Studio and show you there how you can you can uh, analyze this simulation. So um, here it is. So let's go to the ROS Development Studio. This is rds.theconstructsim.com. And you will reach your projects page that it looks like uh, we are uh, going to be on maintenance on Saturday. So take care on Saturday. Uh, because we'll do some maintenance and to please save your pro uh, your projects before that maintenance time. So anyway, uh, let's do the step by step. So first, let's create a new project that we are going to call like um, a drone project. Very, very interesting name. Yes. OK, so there it is. I have a project and I'm going to open it. And then we are going to do is to download the code for a drone simulation and then we are going to analyze it okay you will see that it is very simple and you will be able to modify that for your own drone okay so let's say no great so now first thing let's go and clone this repo that contains um the drone simulation then for that I have, uh, uh, we are going to use a simulation that it's called the D uh, S J T U drone. So uh, this simulation, uh, it's, it has the, is the original one that we are going to use now, but the original one doesn't work quite well, for, at least for Gazebo 7, that is the one that we are going to execute here. So um, we have cloned that repo, in our own repository of the construct. And we are going to uh, upload the our version because we have corrected some of the errors. And for that, I have to do a git clone of our address that is here. Uh, sorry, not, not in this space. I have to go first to the simulation, workspace, and source, and then do the git clone, of course. Great. So we are cloning this simulation, the Parrot Adron, but which is basically it's a copy of the Ace JTU drone simulation, and uh, but we have solved the errors that contain there. 
And then in order to see the files, let me open the code editor. And I'm going to make it bigger if I can. OK, and go to the simulation workspace. Here we have the files that I have downloaded just right now. Great. So uh, once I have uh, downloaded, I need to compile this in order to make it work. I can make. And let's see. Now, once I have it compiled, what I will do is to show you how it looks. And then we are going to go through the code, OK? And explain you how it works, everything. So it is compiling this. And let's see. So we're going to open it here. Let me just put it here. Yes, OK. So basically, we are going to check this SJTU drone directory. So we have added some extra stuff here on top. You can download this simulation. I will put, the, of course, the link. So you can also clone this repo and have everything. Actually, it's already on the notes of the, of the, web in, of the live show. So if you come here, that is the, the page. You will see here all the links that I am talking about. Okay, so I have a mistake on the videos, I think, somewhere. But yeah, no, don't worry about that. I will correct afterwards. So here it's still compiling. It has some warnings, but nothing very dangerous. No problem. Um, basically, um, what we are going to check is here on the SJTU drone, we are going to check the model that it's here. Here is the model that defines the drone. This is what the question was uh, asking at the beginning. OK, the compilation, the compilation has finished. So we are going to see this. But first, let me launch it, this simulation. So I'm going to go to here to simulations and then select from my simulation workspace. I'm not going to launch the other. Uh, there is another parrot here drone that you can launch, but this is the one installed in the system. If you want to avoid problems with compilations and simulation, just press there. But now we are interested in launching our own file. So let's come here and I have to launch this main launch. In the drone construct package, the main launch. So I launch it and let's see. When it appears, uh, it's loading. And now it's loading the one that we have uh, compiled. OK. So let's wait here until it opens. Here it is. It appears gazebo. And here we have the parrot simulation. Let me hide the log. Yes. And here it is, just with an environment that we also have created for our tests. And that's the simulation, that's a parrot drone, OK? So how this parrot drone works is very simple. Uh, we can, let me put it here on the other side, here. And just uh, by pressing, um, it's publishing, I think. Yes, it's publishing on the raw topic um, of the drone that it's called uh, takeoff. We'll see what, um, a message. Take off and it's uh, an empty message. STD, that's a service that when receives an empty message, then it makes the drone take off. That's provided by the simulation. And here it is. So there it is, the drone that has uh, taken off. Here, there it is. OK. So far, so good. And then we can make the same thing. We can, for example, send the commands to move it around for that. Uh, so you can see that it's a full simulation. And you can see the movement of the drone, how it looks. Like, for example, to one side. Let me see here. So it's now it's rotating. But if I, if I press here on the uh, 
capital letter, then it will move to one side. Stop, move to the other, to the front, etc. And now, when we are done, we can do the same procedure, but instead of taking off, is uh, the topic it's called uh, land. So I'm explaining you this, yes, and it, then it falls down. I'm explaining you this because later on the code, you are going to see how these things are written. Right, so we have the, the, the drone model done here. And what we have to do is to check the model, the file model that the question was asking for. How can I construct a URDF file? OK, in this case, the simulation is made by an SDF file. That is this one, sjtudrone.sdf. I'm going to open. And let me just put it bigger, because maybe you will see better and select as a as a, let me select the type so you can see yeah and then uh, here this is the sdf file that describes the model of the robot and maybe you are interested on the urdf you mentioned okay don't worry uh, you can convert any sdf into urdf if you you want. We are using the SDF because it's the one that Gazebo uses natively and because it's the one that this model has been built. But it's basically, it's more or less the same. So you do the conversion, you will see. In order to see the, to do the conversion, you can also um, use this uh, video that I'm going to show you here. It's a, a video that it's, uh, it's here for the conversion from SDF to URDF. So that's the video. And here you can see how to convert the SDF ex explicitly for the, the drone, actually. So uh, in this case, it's, uh, it's using uh, the, the drone that we are seeing here. So yeah, so here it is, the, the conversion of the drone. Yeah, there it is. OK, so just in case that you need some uh, uh, specific cities for the URDF, use this video and just convert it. Okay, so now let's analyze. It's an, let's analyze how it works with the uh, SDF. Okay, so this is the SDF model of the robot. And as you can see, it's, it's very basic. So it's just a model name and then a plugin. Starts a plugin that it's called um, Leap plugin drone. Okay, so take care of that because we are going to talk about this. So it's basically this plugin, then it specifies the pose and the inertias, masses, uh, inertia parameters of the model, and then the visual and the collision of the model. Okay, so this is basically the only part that is indicating how the drone shape has to be and this shape is made by this single element it's just a single element it's just a link the base link and then it's in this link we have a visual and a collision that is provided by the DAE, DAE file okay so this file is the one that is installed here in the model of the drone. So it's the one here. So this is the file that is defining how it looks, the robot, the drone. And it's exactly the same one that we have for the collision. So when we compute collisions here in Gazebo, we are using the same file. Great, so that's it. So it doesn't have anything else. It's just this link with this die. But how do we control it? That's another matter. For the model of the robot, it's just that. But then the rest of the SDF file, what it contains are all the plugins that are required to control it. So the first controlling plugin is this one. 
the one that I already mentioned, okay? Leap plugin drone. This is the key of the control of the robot. Then after the model that they have put it here, then they have all the rest of plugins, but those rest of plugins are not for the control, are just for sensors. This is for the IMU sensor, for the sonar, for the front camera, and for the down camera. And that's it, there is no more. So you can see that is a very simple model. It's a very, very simple model. So what we have again, okay, I'm going to repeat is first, the shape of the robot here, this is the shape of the robot and it's a single link, that's all. And then a plugin for controlling that shape. This is the one that is emulating the physics. You remember that I told you at the beginning, we have two options. One is to simulate the collisions of the air with the fan and make the robot lift up. So that's not the option that we are taking here. We are taking something simpler that is to emulate how the how this link has to move into gazebo and that emulation is made by this plugin lead plugin drone okay and then the rest is the sensors for the imu for the sonar for one camera and another camera and this is very well written here in a document made by the people that have created this simulation. So you also have a link to this document on the notes of the program. And here it shows, as you can see, the different plugins for the this drone. Basically, this one is the ROS init plugin, is the one that provides ROS inside Gazebo. So this is already provided by ROS and Gazebo, so you don't have to worry about that. But then we have the drone plugin, and then the IMU plugin and the camera plugin. And then after this document, they have added the sonar one that is not included there. You see here is the sonar one. Okay, IMU cameras and sonar. So these are the core of the simulation. Actually, this plugin drone is the core of the emulation of the behavior of the robot, of the drone in this simulator. And this is the one that provides those topics that I show you, that is the land topic for getting down or the takeoff or putting the robot off the ground. So uh, these are provided by this plugin here. Okay, so far so good. Any question? No questions? Okay, great. Then, um, Let's see, let's have a look at this plugin because that's the core. So, but before we go to there, let me tell you that uh, in case that you want to create for your own drone, you just have to do this. In, if you want to emulate, okay? If you want to emulate, you create your visual that is a Colada file or can be also an STL. Here it is also provided the STL, but it's not used. It's only the Colada file. That's the model, how it looks, and then just provide the sensors that the robot has to have. And also you can specify the position related to the, to the base link, so the, the center point of the robot or else. So it is, you can configure okay, these plugins as you want, depending on how they are in your actual drone. But you don't need that uh, now. So it's only this model, this, and then finally you have to add this plugin here. That is the one that emulates the, the, the movement of the drone. And either you take the same code as is, because as you have seen here, it moves quite well. So it looks like a real drone moving around. Or you can also modify it at your will depending on the particularities of your drone. Great, so um, now let me check if I'm missing any other point. Uh, no, so let's have a look, a quick look to the plugin drone, uh, lead plugin drone, CPP, and this one, the plugin drone, it's uh, here. Uh, 
Uh, let me see. I think it's here. Yes, here it is. So we have here the plugin draws, uh, plugin drone, plugin drone. It's plugin drone here. Okay, so I'm going to open it. And that's it. So the plugin drone, it's a plugin of ROS that it's of a type that it's called a model. So let me just open the plugin drone.h and you will see that this class, that is the plugin itself, it is here. The H is the plugin drone H here. So we have that this class, drone simple controller, is our plugin. It inherits from model plugin. So this is a model plugin for Gazebo. If you go to the Gazebo information, you will see that there are different types of six types of plugins. And one of them is a model. The model, it's a a model plugin is attached and controls a specific model in Gazebo. So that's exactly what we need. We need to emulate how this model, how this drone behaves in the simulation. That's a model plugin. OK. So, so far, so good. So basically, that's the code. We have the constructor, the destructor, and then the load function. That is the one that is executed when the plugin is loaded for the first time. Okay, when you specify it here in the RDF, in the SDF here. So when the ROS launch that we have launched gets into loading this SDF, then it says, hey, load this plugin. And then we go to this load function. And here is where all the topics that you have seen is the drone takeoff drone land and others that we haven't seen yet and so they these are the ones that are created here so they are subscribed to those also looking for the imu etc other parameters here then um what else so um also here yes there is the common bell that this is the topic that we have used here when we were sending commands to the robot and making it move around. So those were received by here. So basically, what this plugin does is inside this part, uh, this function that is the update cycle. Let me see. Update. Let's find it. Uh, here it is. This is the update cycle. That's the one that is updated at every cycle of the simulation. And inside this, you have two functions, basically. This one, update state and update dynamics. On the update state, what it looks is if the robot is in taking off status or in landing model, and if it is not in neither of those, then it will be flying model when it's when it's uh, after taking off, and or landed model when it has been after landing mode. So it's just changing this because afterwards, the equations for controlling the robot will take care what's the status, and those equations are created in this update dynamics. So this update dynamics is the next function here that is executed in the loop cycle of the simulator. And here is where all the magic happens. So basically, it's a lot of equations that have been put here and mathematical equations in order to emulate the, the behavior of the robot. And how have they created those equations? Well, they have been studying how it behaves and you can have some information here about in this second document that those guys of the SJTU have built. And here you will find a lot of information about how um, how the the actual the real flying theory that makes the, the drones fly. But also, so this is something that I have explained before. You have even the equations and how do they apply the different forces, et cetera, et cetera. But also, you can find 
some of the equations that they have used here and sorry here for commanding the robot so basically that's it so it's nothing more than that how to create the sdf of your drone is just like that if you don't use the lift draft plugin that emulates the fans okay so that's another matter that it's for a longer discussion maybe in another occasion if somebody is asking for that so basically there is nothing more than this and i hope that there is, is this is clear so um if you have any questions you can post it there if not otherwise let's go to the next session let me just stop the camera so you can see me again and then so i will wait for you if you have any questions now some a couple of minutes or something for questions otherwise i will move to the next section that the next section is uh, about answering additional questions so when you submit a question for us here in, in the link that you have beneath this video you can submit the questions okay so we select the one that looks like the most promising the most interesting for the public the most uh, the one that can be shown better but then for all the others we make a list and we try to solve them directly or at least to provide some some feedback from here okay so that is what i'm going to try to do now in the additional question section uh, first question we have two questions today for this section first one is question by nagala deepak from india that says i am trying to map an unknown environment for this i'm using a kinect and actor mapping i do want to do the same i only have a kinect okay please go through this link and i have a question uh, with a link of the question that has been posted into the into the answers of Ross. So you will know my problem. You could mail me for any further information, any idea or suggestion will be of help. Okay, let me show you what is the question that he has posted. So it will be easier for you to, to see. So this is the question. Problem getting map using Hector's lamp. So he explained here's a lot of problems about his question that he's trying to do that by recording a ROS back of a laser that has been obtained. This laser has been obtained by converting a point cloud of the Kinect into a laser. Okay, and then afterwards he is using uh, he is recording the scan and then he tries to to use this uh, scan uh, this bag that has created it he reproduces it and then he wants to um, uh, create a map by using the data that is on the rose bag okay that's how i understand his question here and in this case what i see is that you have a problem because uh, you, you i see two problems here the first one is that you are not publishing the TF of your laser. So if you go here to your frames that you are recording, you see you are only publishing these frames. So you are not recording any frame for your laser. And so then it means that your system doesn't know where is located the laser related to the to the robot also you don't have you don't have a base link or something like says where is the center of the robot and how it is moving from that also you don't have an odometry there so you need to have an odometry in order to see how this uh, robot is moving on the environment so um this is one thing and then uh first this is for the publication okay but then the second thing is that when you are recording you are not recording you are only recording the scan topic and then you have to record other topics that are required afterwards in order to 
to execute the creation of the map. For example, if you go to the G mapping that you are using, the G mapping, here at the documentation, you can see how the SLAM G mapping is subscribed to the topics of TF and scan, but you are not publishing the, you are not recording, sorry, the TF, you are not recording it. So then when you play here, then of course there are no transforms. And then the system cannot understand from where are those scans coming. So you are missing a lot of information. So what I recommend you first is that first, to describe better how is your robot in this question? How does it look? How do you provide an odometry for that robot? Then when you try to, and then publish the odometry and the TF, et cetera. And then when you record everything, uh, record for creation of the pack, record everything, not only this, also the topics of the clock, also the topics of the rose, rose out. So you will have the whole information of what is happening when you are recording. So afterwards you can analyze better. And also you can make the system work because it may require to subscribe to all the topics that you are not recording. Okay, so uh, basically in order to record everything, just type ROS back record minus A, that's the option. Okay, so what else? Uh, we have a second question. That is a second question from Bonnie from the UK, United Kingdom. Uh, he says, I am curious to know if it is possible to simulate soft robotics joints in Arbis. And then, okay, Bonnie, the first thing is that I presume that you mean to simulate in Gazebo, not in Arbis. Uh, Arbis is not a simulator. It's just a visualizer of the current situation that you are publishing about your robot. So Arbis is not a simulator. This is something that has to be understood. The simulator is Gazebo. And Arbis is just a visualizer of the data that you are generating in your robot. That's all. And th this data can be generated by the actual real robot or can be generated by the simulation or also can be generated by the ROSBAC, of course. But so let's talk about the simulation in Gazebo, okay? Then for Gazebo to simulate the soft things, it's difficult. So uh, let me show you a video here that shows how the people of the OSRF, the creators of ROS, have achieved to do that. It's in a, in a competition that was some years ago, is the Virtual Robotics Challenge. And they have to, simulate a, uh, a pipe for for fire so the fire pipe you know that is for the uh, what's the name in english now the fire guys the ones who have to to take care of the fires so they what they have done is to kind of simulate so they have to use rigid segments that they attach at some points by a joint but it is impossible to get out of those rigid elements. So let me show you how it looks. So you can have a look that it looks like a like a pipe, a flexible pipe. You see how it moves. And let me see if it's better on before. Yeah, maybe here. When it starts grasping the 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 pipe here. You see how it moves and then it kinds of make it the illusion that is flexible, but actually it's not possible to make something flexible yet. We'll reach that point at some point in time. And it looks like this doesn't want to refresh. So yeah, sometimes happen, here it is. Okay, you can here see how it behaves. Then it looks like it's maybe for your application it's, good enough just it just depends okay so you get the idea great so we have finished now with the questions for today uh, the additional questions and now we are going to move to the next section that is the useful tools section in this section what we try to do is to present you tools that you can use in your daily programming life 
with ROS and that can make you the life easier. So it's interesting that you know about them. So uh, some of the tools are already known by the people who are in the in the business, let's say, but uh, we will try also to present uh, new tools that somebody is developing somewhere in the world and it's difficult to get access to them, to know them. So we'll try to provide you those two. For today, for today, we are going to see the dynamic reconfigure tool. And what is the dynamic reconfigure tool? It's a tool that allows you to configure the parameters of a node on the fly. So when you launch a node, a ROS program, when you launch a ROS program, you provide to them a parameter. For example, it's uh, the speed at which you want the robot to move. I don't know. So this is something that is fixed. It's a parameter, OK? Or the maximum speed. Then you launch it, and once you launch it, this parameter is inside So the, the program that is running. So what happens if you now you are doing experiments and then you want to modify that value of the speed? Oh, you have to close the, the program, change it in the code or in the configuration file, and then run it again, launch it again, the program. Okay, so that's quite tedious to do and then makes you waste a lot of time. For that, instead of doing that, you can use the dynamic configure um, tool that what allows you is to define those parameters as changeable in real time. So you can use an application in, that connects in real time to your node and then modify in real time. You can see the effects in real time and we are going to see how it works. So let me show you a small demo that how it works. First, you can have all the information about the dynamic reconfigure here in this link in the ROS documentation. And then it describes how to use it, how to install it. It's quite simple. And also, if you go further, you will learn how to make your parameters in your program accessible by the dynamic reconfigure. OK, so now let's go again back to the ROS development studio where we left this. I'm going to close this because we don't need it anymore. And I'm going to put the simulation here, move a little backward. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch. I'm going to launch. I'm going to make the robot, for example, take off. Let's make it take off. So then we can see some stuff better. Great. So there it is, it has taken off. And now I'm going to launch the tool that allows me to modify the parameters that are modifiable in this simulation of the drone, inside the drone. OK. So for that, I'm going to launch a tool that is called RQT Reconfigure. So I'm going to launch it like ROS run. RQT reconfigure, RQT reconfigure. Okay, so that's the tool that allow us to see the. Uh, it's a graphical tool that allow us to modify the values of the parameters. Okay, since is it is a graphical tool, we have to open it into the graphical tools. Uh, window. So I'm going to open here and we'll see how this tool has been generated. There it is. Okay, so now we have here this RQT um, reconfigure tool and I'm going to put it bigger so you can see better. Yes, don't worry. And just take the whole screen. Great. So now, here we have a list of all the parameters that the drone has that can be modified on the fly. So I'm going to open it. And we have the dome camera and the front camera. So it's only for the camera's parameters. So oh, let's put it there. And for the image row, the compressed value. So it's the compressed value of the drone from camera image row compressed. OK, so this is like the quality of the image that the, ima the, the camera is doing. OK, so let's see how it works in real time. OK, so you, you just modify by moving the slide like this. So now I have decreased the camera 
quality. Okay, yes, but yeah, Ricardo, you say so. So how can we trust you? Yes, very good question. How can we trust you trust me? You can trust me. I'm a nice guy, but don't just rely on my words. I'm going to show you how this works. So for that, let's open the camera and let's see what the camera is doing. For that, I'm going to open a new shell. And in this shell, we don't need to have a big screen. So just here, I'm putting it here smaller. And I'm going to launch the image view. Okay, so it's RTT image view. By opening this, it's also a graphic tool, so it's going to appear here, of course. So you can see that it appears on top of the other one. And I'm going to put it here on here beneath and uh, configure as on top of. Uh, so we don't miss anything. Now I'm going to select the topic that we want to see. And is this topic here, drawn from camera image row compressed. Drawn from camera image row compressed, that one. And now we should see what the drone is seeing. Yeah, OK, so it went very, very far. Let's make it land, even if it's very. Oh, sorry, I, I, closed, the <laughs> I closed the application. OK, so don't worry. Let's launch it again. I thought here we had the option. And this one also crashed. So let me just relaunch it. Great. So. One is here, you know the procedure, yes? One is here, the image view, let's put uh, from camera image uh, compress, there it is. And here, let me put it here. So we can go to the from camera image row compress. There it is, the values. And if I, let me see if I can, Put it a little bit bigger. Yes, there it is. And now I'm going to move the robot down, OK? Because otherwise, we cannot see anything. And here it goes. Another shell. So I can I can launch the, uh, I can publish, draw, stop, pick, pop, the landing drone plan, CD message. Empty, empty. So now the drone is going to crash very fast, probably. And we can see on the image. Yes. OK, there it is. <laughs> the drone has crashed. And uh, now I'm going to make it again, because the, the viewer is better if we can uh, take off. So it's better. Great, so we can see something. Great. Now I'm going to modify the parameters of the quality of the image. And you will see here on the image how it changes based on that in real time. So you should see how the quality decreases. Uh, yes, it's this one. It should decrease. Let me see. I Have I selected the, crop, the proper one? Yes, from camera image. So we cannot see this very clear okay now yes we are okay yeah we have to decrease a lot in order to see a loss of quality yeah but here it is you can see how the image is getting um, worse and worse as i decrease the amount of quality of the image of course almost pixels pixels and now if i increase in real time you can see how the quality is increasing as i increase the the value Okay, great. So that's an example of how you can use the dynamic reconfigure in real time. While the robot is moving around, you can modify the parameters and get the values that you want. That is quite useful, let me tell you. And that's it. That's it, guys. So uh, that's all. Five, uh, <laughs> yes, Jorge Vargas says on the chat, five fighters. Yes, that's it. Thank you, Jorge. I couldn't see your answer before, your, your support. Thank you very much. So that's it. So if you have any question right now, you have your chance to ask it on the chat, on the live chat. Otherwise, if you don't have your question prepared, you can have it and write it down on the form that you have beneath this uh, video. 
Okay, and then we'll prepare this for the next session. R related for the next session is already decided. It's about how to use OpenAI for your training your robot. It, that will be on live session number five. And um, it says uh, here a question about uh, Takaoh, very strange name, sorry, Takaoh, something like that. It says, what drones do you suggest using with the ROS platform? Okay, so I don't know. I don't really know because I'm not a user, an active user of the drones and for for Ross. So I don't know. Let me think about. Oh yes, no, no, wait, wait. Yes, I know. The best ones are the ones from Early Robotics. Yes, our friends of Early Robotics that now is called Acutronic has been acquired. This this uh, company early has been acquired by Acutronic and those are a very nice um, company that they provide drones that work with ROS off the shelf. So you don't have to do anything strange like with a parrot. So you buy a parrot, you have to have a computer that connects to the parrot and that computer is the one that runs the ROS layer. In the case of early, you already, you boot up and then the the drone is already talking into ROS. And also the drones are very, very high quality. So I highly recommend Erle Robotics. If you look Erle Robotics, it will appear there, uh, even if they have been acquired. So that's related to that question. And then I have another question from a guy who says Napster Naps, probably a fake name that says in another language, in Catalan language, he says, uh, it, it would be very nice if everyone can pass the XM of navigation systems. That would be very nice. This is probably a message from uh, one of my students. And yes, you you have the chance to pass the XM if you are studying. So just dedicate the time to study instead of watching your teacher on, on YouTube. And I see that there are no more questions here. So what I said, if you have one question, one important project that doesn't move forward because something you can ask as the question on the questions and answer link beneath. And remember that we are publishing one new video every day solving questions about draws. So if you like these videos, please subscribe to our channel and press the bell so you will be notified when this video pops up. Um, see you next week at the same time about how to apply OpenAI to train your robot. Cheers, mates.